1948. A country is born in the middle of the desert. No rivers, no rain, no hope of survival, according to experts. Currently, that same country not only survived, it dominated water. Israel uses every drop five times before returning it to nature. They transform sand into farms, desert into gardens. And the secret formula you're about to discover. While the world faces one of the greatest water crises in history, with more than two billion people without access to drinking water, Israel did the impossible. A country where 60% of the territory is arid desert, where it rains less than two inches per year in the south, where the Jordan River was dying. Today, Israel is not only self-sufficient in water, it exports water technology to more than 150 countries. In this documentary, you will discover how a people transformed their greatest weakness into their greatest strength. How scarcity forced the most radical innovation in modern history. And why solutions created in the Israeli desert can save humanity's future. Let's explore the Negev Desert. 4,700 square miles of sand, rocks and scorching heat. Here temperatures reach 115 degrees Fahrenheit in summer. Rain is a rare miracle. The soil is hostile to life, but something extraordinary happens here. Tomato fields grow where there should only be sand. Flowers bloom under the relentless sun. Farms thrive in conditions that would kill any conventional crop. How is this possible? The answer is buried underground, literally, because Israel had no choice. When the country was founded in 1948, there was only one significant source of fresh water, the Sea of Galilee. A lake with a capacity of one trillion gallons of water. Sounds like a lot, it's not. To feed a growing population, develop agriculture and build a modern nation, Israel would need much more. And the Sea of Galilee was drying up. In 1950, Israeli leaders gathered to face a terrible truth. Within 20 years, the country would run out of water. Extinction wasn't a distant possibility. It was a mathematical certainty. But something extraordinary happened in that room. Instead of despair, determination was born. If nature wouldn't provide enough water, Israel would create its own water. The idea seemed absurd, impossible, but it was the only way out. And so began the greatest water revolution in history. The first step was radical. Build a national water distribution system connecting every corner of the country. The national water carrier was born a pharaonic project that would cross mountains, deserts, and valleys. Inaugurated in 1964, the system transports water from the humid north to the arid south through 81 miles of pipelines, channels, and reservoirs. But transporting water wasn't enough. It needed to be multiplied. And that's when a kibbutz in the desert changed everything. In the early 1960s, an engineer named Simcha Blas noticed something strange. A giant tree grew alone in the middle of the desert, next to a leaking pipe. The water slowly dripping from the pipe kept that tree alive. Blas had an epiphany. What if we could control this dripping? What if we could deliver water directly to plant roots drop by drop without waste? Drip irrigation was born. The system is ingeniously simple. Perforated tubes with tiny holes deliver water directly to the roots. Each plant receives exactly the amount of water it needs, no more, no less. The results were surprising. Drip irrigation uses 70% less water than traditional methods and increases productivity by up to 90%. In the Negev desert, farmers began growing tomatoes, peppers, flowers, and even strawberries with a fraction of the water needed anywhere else in the world. Today, 75% of Israeli agriculture uses drip irrigation but this was just the first piece of the puzzle. Because even with maximum water efficiency, Israel still needed more, much more. And the solution came from where no one imagined. Every time you shower, wash dishes or flush, that water goes away, right? Wrong. In Israel, 90% of all water used in homes and industries is treated and reused. 90%. To give you an idea, the second place in this ranking is Spain with only 25%. Let's visit the Shafdan treatment plant on the outskirts of Tel Aviv. 
one of the world's largest water recycling facilities. Every day, 106 million gallons of sewage arrive here. Dirty water full of waste, pollutants and bacteria. 72 hours later, that same water comes out clean, purified and ready to irrigate farms. The process is fascinating. The water goes through multiple stages of filtration, biological treatment and advanced purification. Then it's pumped to the Negev Desert through a 50-mile aqueduct. There it irrigates 50,000 acres of agricultural land. But Israel didn't stop there. Because even recycling 90% of the water, it still wasn't enough. Water needed to be created from nothing. And that's exactly what they did. Welcome to the era of desalination. On Israel's Mediterranean coast, five giant desalination plants transform seawater into drinking water. The largest is Sorek, a technological cathedral that produces 165 million gallons of fresh water per day. The process is called reverse osmosis. Seawater is forced through microscopic membranes that filter salt and impurities. It's like sifting water at the molecular level. The result, pure crystal clear water indistinguishable from spring water. And here's the most impressive fact. Today, 80% of all drinking water consumed in Israeli homes comes from desalination. 80%. Israel has become the only country in the world that produces more water than it consumes. Let that sink in for a moment. A country born dying of thirst now has water to spare. But the Israeli revolution goes beyond technology. It transformed the country's culture itself. From childhood, Israelis learn that water is sacred that every drop counts. Showers have timers. Faucets are designed to save. Gardens are irrigated with recycled water. Toilets use dual flush systems. The average water consumption per person in Israel is 26 gallons per day. In the United States, 82 gallons. But perhaps the most impressive example of Israel's water revolution is at Kibbutz Isde Eliyahu in the Jordan Valley. Here, farmers developed a system called precision agriculture. Soil sensors monitor moisture, nutrients, and needs of each plant in real time. Computers automatically adjust irrigation. Drones fly over fields identifying areas with water stress before the human eye can perceive it. The result? They produce dates, peppers, and herbs using 50% less water than conventional methods and export to the entire world. But not everything is perfect in Israel's water paradise. Desalination consumes enormous amounts of energy. The plants together generate 2 million tons of CO2 per year. Excessive aquifer extraction caused land subsidence in some regions. The Dead Sea is dying, losing one meter of depth per year. And there's an issue that cannot be ignored. Palestinians in the West Bank have access to only 18 gallons of water per person per day one-third of Israeli consumption. Technology solved the scarcity problem, but not the issue of fair distribution. Still, what Israel achieved is nothing short of extraordinary. From a country condemned to extinction for lack of water, it became the global leader in water technology. Israeli companies export irrigation, desalination and water treatment systems to more than 150 countries, from California to India, from Australia to Brazil, in Cape Town, South Africa, when the city almost ran out of water in 2018, it was Israeli engineers who helped prevent collapse. In California, plagued by historic droughts, farmers adopt irrigation systems developed in Israel. In the Rajasthan Desert, India, communities use Israeli technology to grow food where nothing grew before. Israel's secret formula isn't a single trick. It's a combination of technological innovation, relentless efficiency, and a culture that values every drop of water. It's drip irrigation. It's recycling 90% of water. It's massive scale desalination. It's precision agriculture. It's education from childhood. But above all, it's proof that necessity really is the mother of invention. When survival is at stake, when there's no plan B, humanity finds solutions that seemed impossible. And now these solutions born in the desert can save the planet. Because the global water crisis is just beginning. By 2050, two-thirds of the world's population will live in regions with water scarcity. Aquifers are drying up. Glaciers are melting. Rivers are dying. 
The question isn't if we'll face water scarcity. The question is, will we be ready? Israel proved that yes, it's possible, that the technology exists, that we can transform deserts into gardens, that we can multiply drops into oceans. But it also teaches us that this transformation requires more than technology. It requires political will, investment in research, cultural change, and above all, the determination to never accept the impossible as an answer. Because in the end, the story of Israel and water isn't just about a small country in the Middle East. It's about what humanity can achieve when forced to innovate, when survival depends on creativity, when there's no room to give up. It's about transforming the greatest weakness into the greatest strength. And if Israel managed to do the impossible in the desert, what else can we do? The answer is in our hands, and time is running out. Because water, like time, waits for no one. And you? Do you believe that innovation has the power to transform the future? Leave your like, subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. And tell me in the comments, how do you see innovation impacting tomorrow? Let's spread this message together. Thank you for making it this far. Stay tuned for more incredible stories about innovations that are changing the world. See you in the next video.